Well, the holiday season is upon us, and weather-wise, I think we're all thinking of that old song, I'm dreaming of yeah. a white Christmas. And we always hope that that's the case, but recently our minds have been on weather tragedies that have just right. jolted so many parts of the world in this month of December. Seems like there have been a lot mm -hmm. of them. So Tony Cavalier uses this past weekend's tornado outbreak in the heartland as a reminder that these days, really anything goes. Oh my God. A Saturday afternoon of tornado terror in Middle Tennessee when a family of twisters tore through parts of the Volunteer State en route to the bluegrass. In the town of Clarksville, three people perished and scores of homes were destroyed when the violent whirlwind ripped through. Everything just like exploded. This is what it really felt like. It felt like everything exploded, like a lot of pressure built up and just popped. So soon as we got in here and, and, and knelt down on our knees, all this started just caving in. Glass was busting. Stuff was flying around. It was crazy. The storm came two years almost to the day in 2021 when emergency sirens blared during the epic tornado outbreak that spun its way that day through the Mississippi and lower Ohio valleys. This video is from the infamous Mayfield tornado that flattened parts of a rural American town just two weeks before Christmas. Somebody described it as a war zone. That's kind of what it looks like right now. It's part coincidence, part puzzling precedent when two storms, two years apart, turn life before the holidays into a calamity. So let's compare these two tornado tracks two years apart. The Clarksville, Tennessee tornado wound its way into south central Kentucky past Russellville before fading away. Two years ago, the Mayfield, Kentucky tornado formed in north central Tennessee and worked its way just to the south of the Ohio River through western Kentucky. It was on the ground for 165 frightening miles over a three-hour period. These two tracks are a mere 72 miles apart. So we're seeing what I call not so much coincident, but precedent being set in the last couple of years when you can get tornadic st thunderstorms during the month of December and even January, long away from the spring and the summer peak that we normally talk about. How about our area? Can we ever get in on a December or a January tornado? Well, the storm as it died north of Russellville in Kentucky was a mere 150 to 200 miles away from our part of the WSAZ viewing area. But all storms that come in this direction bring a south wind or a southeast wind with them. And oftentimes that wind has to contend with the mountains, the Appalachian, the Cumberland Plateau, and come down the hill. So oftentimes these circulations will be torn apart. But I must admit that back in 1998, a storm that was absolutely fascinating to me went from Tennessee, Kentucky, the circulation passed, and then dropped a tornado in Wood County in Murphytown up in north central West Virginia. So the bottom line is, yes, severe weather in the form of tornadoes, while exceptionally unusual, can occur at this time of the year. So if we compare the twisters from Clarksville, Tennessee, 150 mile an hour winds this past weekend with the Mayfield, Kentucky tornado of two years ago, which was 190 mile an hour winds on the force rating from an F3 to an F4. Anytime you get above F1, you're talking about the potential of deadly consequences. The West Liberty and Salyersville tornado of 2012 in March produced 140 mile per hour winds and there were multiple deaths in Morgan and Lawrence County from that one. F3 was the rating. And the Murphytown 1998 twister in January up in Wood County produced winds of 111 miles per hour or more on an F2 scale. It's all part of the changing climate close by to the Ohio and Mississippi River on a warming planet. And Tony joins us here. Yes, uh, to answer a few questions for yeah. us, because Tony, I was saying to you, I feel like forecasting now, I hear you talk a lot more about spring-like storms mm -hmm. that we are seeing in typical winter months, right. as opposed to more of those winter-like storms that we would see. So what is the big takeaway from, from your perspective well, that everyone should be aware of? The climate has changed. The, mm -hmm. the, the globe has warmed. We just saw that uh, last month uh, made still another record. So right. we, we know it's warm across the planet. Warm air is more volatile. It's like the little girl with the curl. You know, it's <laughs> great to play in, right. but boy, when, when she gets bad, the weather can get really bad. Mm -hmm. And so now we're seeing this can occur any month of the year. It used to be we reserved December and January 
for a time when it was just a cold or rainy weather, snowy up north, but we didn't have to worry about these violent mm -hmm. spring-like mm -hmm. tornado outbreaks. But now we're seeing uh, on a planet where it's warmer right. that some of these events can occur all the way through the 12 months of the year. And I feel like uh, in the past, we didn't really have to th worry about it or prepare. I know for me, I always thought, well, we live in an area with all these hills. Mountains. That's going to protect mm -hmm. us a little more. But what should we be doing? And, and they do. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, I think the folks who live in mobile homes, they have mm -hmm. to have a plan all the time. I've been saying this since I went to an Ohio State symposium 25 years ago, and mm -hmm. I talked to structural engineers. If you live in a mobile home and a tornado watch is issued, it's, mm -hmm. it's, De definitely going to impact your life in that my recommendation is well during a tornado watch living in a mobile home you go to a safe structure mm -hmm. even though there's not going to be a tornado probably there right but you can't wait for a tornado to come because as we saw on the left fork of the little Blaine back in uh, 2012 in March when that tornado went through parts of Lawrence County in Kentucky. It lifted mobile homes and crashed them against the wall. Right. And the Chafin family, for example, lost two people. So mm. it's really, really hard to say if you live in a mobile home to be on edge during a tornado right. watch staying mm -hmm. at home. So why not just, but if you pack up your family and leave for six hours when a watch is issued and nothing happens, then you've inconvenienced your life for six hours. So right. it's just the nature of the beast right now. And the, the, the fatalities in uh, Clarksville were in mobile home. Mm. When, uh, hey, look, it's just, it, I guess it's a fact of it, Tony. I, when you're considering a place to live, you know, you want your family to be safe. And I think weather plays a big part of that. Mm -hmm. What do you foresee in the future? I mean, are these areas that you think are maybe targets for future storms like this? We like to say that the mountaintops and the valley floors are two different. The mountaintops are more susceptible to the wind mm -hmm. and the valley floors are more susceptible to the flooding because that's, of course, where all the water right. flows. Right. So um, unless you're willing to move to California, mm, yeah. <laughs> unless you're willing to... Hard to pack up everybody in. Right. You know, yeah. uh, there really is... I've had folks call me, uh, they want to go down to Florida. Where's the safe place for insurance purposes? Mm -hmm. There are insurance companies that are no longer insuring some people in Florida right now from these winds and these... And you've got hurricanes, too, you know. So, that, yeah. I don't know that there's, a, unless you live on a tropical island somewhere right. in the middle of the Pacific, and then you have to worry about typhoons or there's hurricanes. There's always something, right? Yeah. I, yeah. Mean, I, I think our yeah. area is reasonably, except for mm -hmm. the floods, we're reasonably protected from the strongest winds. Right. Although in Salyersville and in uh, Lawrence yeah. County back in 2012, the last time we had a killer tornado in our area. Yeah. Well, and Tony, no pressure. I know we're talking <laughs> spring and rain and all these storms and everything, but what, what are our odds, do you think, at this point for a white Christmas? Well, let's put it this way. I was just looking at some weather maps. It's going to be 40 degrees in Minnesota uh -huh. two days before Christmas. Okay. <laughs> well, there well, you have it. <laughs> yeah. Always great talking with uh, you, Tony. Tony, we appreciate you coming into Studio Thank 3. Thank you. Yeah. you.